If you're listening to this podcast, it's probably because a child you love and care for is differently wired. Are they also struggling in their current educational setting, seen only for what they're doing wrong while longing for positive relationships with peers and others? Envision a world where your child's unique abilities are not just recognized, but celebrated. A world where they can connect with others and their true potential is seen and appreciated. The Strength-Based Assessment Lab's mission is to build a world for your child just like that. Through its innovative approach, it aims to empower students, families, educators, and professionals to create positive, effective, and collaborative learning experiences. Be a part of shaping a brighter future for your child. Visit www.bgs.edu to learn more about what a strength-based assessment could mean for your family. That's bgs.edu. The last line on this was my personal why for pursuing this goal is. Do you remember what I meant when I said a personal why? Well, what's my reason for trying to run five kilometers? And why is it important to have a personal why? Because otherwise, it's not really your goal, is it? It's somebody else's goal that they set for you. If you're working towards a goal that you set, but you don't really want to, you should really consider why you're doing it. Welcome to the Tilt Parenting Podcast, a podcast featuring interviews and conversations aimed at inspiring, informing, and supporting parents raising differently wired kids. I'm your host, Debbie Reber, and today's episode is a special kids POV episode with my 12-year-old son, Asher. Today, we're talking about goal setting from Asher's perspective as a kid who has executive functioning challenges while also having a lot of goals he wants to pursue. We're going to talk about the strategies we use to help Asher set and reach goals while also developing his planning and organization skills. We're also sharing our goal planning worksheet on our website. So if you want to download that after listening to the show, I'll share at the end how to do that. This is our first show of 2017, and I've been very busy lining up super interesting topics for the coming year, including the birds and the bees, AKA sex ed for differently wired kids, fostering a love of reading, how to organize your home to support your child's executive function development, ADHD tools, nutrition challenges, and much more. I also wanted to share with you that I recently launched a Patreon campaign for the podcast. In case you're not familiar with it, Patreon is a tool to allow patrons or fans to support the work of artists, musicians, and yes, even podcasters. I'm hoping to get a little support with some of the more time-consuming aspects of producing this weekly podcast, such as editing, which as we all know, costs money. On Patreon, you can support what we're doing for as little as $2 a month, and there are some fun perks too. If you'd like to support our Patreon campaign, please check out our page at www.patreon.com slash tilt parenting. Thank you for considering supporting us and for your patience during this little PSA. And now without further ado, I'll get on with the show. Hey, Asher. Hello. Thank you for doing another Asher special episode with me today. You're welcome. And today, I just have to share for listeners, we are going to be talking about goal setting. And when I suggested that as a topic to you, you know what you said to me? What? You said, oh, good. I love goals. (laughs) Yeah. Is that true? Yeah. Awesome. And also, I just want to let listeners know we are trying something different today. So Asher and I are Skyping this interview. We're in different rooms in our apartment, and we are looking at each other. So we're pretending it's face to face, but this should make the editing process easier. So we'll see how it goes. Sound like a plan? Yeah. So you said, I love goals. What is it about goals that you love? Just curious. Well, it's nice to have things that you're planning to do. That's true. Before we get into talking about our specific process for goal planning, I wanted to just talk a wee bit about executive functioning. Do you know what executive functioning is, Ash? Yeah, it's a part of your brain that controls goals, I think. Well, I mean, the part of your brain is not called executive functioning, but executive functioning means that it controls goals. Right. And actually, I'm going to pull from understood.org, which is one of our favorite resources here. And they have yeah. they have some great information on executive functioning. And they describe executive function is like the CEO of the brain. Exactly. It's like, do this, do that. 
On their website, it says it's in charge of making sure things get done from the planning stages of the job to the final deadline. And when kids have issues with executive functioning and a lot of kids who have who are differently wired who have ADHD or learning differences or autism any sort of neurological differences are often go hand in hand with executive functioning challenges and so kids like you might have trouble with the planning or the organizing or time management and all those other pieces right right so as i've shared with viewers before And you know this, Asher, one of my biggest goals in being a homeschool teacher, of course, we need to do all the subjects, right? Like the math and the science and the language arts and stuff. But I consider one of my biggest jobs to be to work on executive functioning with you. And so we've been working on that stuff for years now. And I actually, my most recent book that came out in 2015 is all about goal planning and goal setting. It's called Doable. And I forced you to read it. Do you remember? Yeah. It was great. Uh It had a cool cover. It does have a cool cover. They did a nice job designing that cover. So Doable is all about how to accomplish just about anything. And what I've done in our work together is take the approach that I included in that book and try to adapt it for you specifically to break it down so that you could start learning how to take a big goal or to do and you are someone who has a lot of big goals. So we get to practice this a lot. But to break that down into steps so that you can start working on all the different areas that go into planning and organizing so you can achieve those goals. Yeah. Do you remember what the first big goal is that we worked on together through our the color run? The color run? Yes, that was almost two years ago. And the reward was supposed to be for Legoland, but I enjoyed the hotel we were staying at next to Legoland more than Legoland. <laughs> That's true. I forgot. We did have a a big motivation reward at the end of that goal. Of going to Legoland. And we went to a really cool hotel and I just stayed there. Right. Because they had an awesome water slide and yeah. lots to do. And they had do. one of those bungee jumpy things. Yeah. The bouncy thingamajiggy. Yeah. You know, the witchamajigger. Yeah, that. The doohickey. Yes, exactly. So, yeah, and the color run, that was a big goal because that was a 5K and you had never run anything more than probably a couple hundred meters or something. I mean, you were not a runner, so it seemed like a big goal. And do you remember how we were practicing to run another 5K now? We are indeed. We are indeed. Do you remember how we organized that goal or went about trying to achieve it? Yeah, we had a goal planning worksheet. I will goal by date. <laughs> I shall goal or die trying. <laughs> I made this um, worksheet at the time you were really into Minecraft. So I tried to use a funky cool font and I put some Minecraft characters on it. And I had four things. I had I will and I wrote in parentheses goal. And that's where you wrote down I will complete the color run 5K. And then the next line was by... And that was the date. And we wrote in the date of the event. The next line was, I will know I have completed this goal when. Do you remember what the purpose of that line was? Yeah, that was, it was when when I can reliably run five kilometers. Right. And the purpose of having that in there is because it's something that's measurable, right? I'll know I've completed this when I have run it. We'll know that it's done. And that's part of making sure a goal is concrete, that yeah, you can exactly. measure when it's finished. It's like, my goal is to not die. Right. That's a that's a great goal. But you don't know when you finished it. That's true. It's not a concrete goal in that way. There's no deadline. Yes, exactly. Thank you for that example. Yeah. Your goal has to be you doing something, not you not doing something. The last line on this was my personal why for pursuing this goal is. Do you remember what I meant when I said a personal why? Well, what's my reason for trying to run five kilometers? And why is it important to have a personal why? Because otherwise, it's not really your goal, is it? Right. It's somebody else's goal that they set for you. Exactly. And if you if you're working towards a goal that you set but you don't really want to, you should really consider why you're doing it. That's a good point. And that's actually that happens a lot for anyone pursuing a goal. They're working on a goal and they haven't considered why they're doing it and sometimes they might be doing it because someone else thought it was a good idea 
or because their parents told them to, or because they're feeling pressure from their friends to do that. And if you're not personally have a personal motivation to do something, then it's going to be harder to achieve it. And it's not going to be very satisfying, even if you do. Yeah. So since we have since we did that color run, which we did finish, I have the photographic evidence to to show us covered in different color powder at the end of that event. I've kind of amped up the goal planning worksheet. And this one I'm going to share on the show notes for people who want to check it out. We have what's simply Darren and I are prepping for a big move at the moment. So we are fully leaning into any and everything that simplifies things. And that absolutely includes mealtimes. At a time when my executive functioning skills are being pushed to the limit, even planning and executing dinner for our family these days can feel like a really big lift. That's why I'm especially grateful for Green Chef, a meal service that offers pre-measured and prepped ingredients to my door. Each box is packed with foods you can feel good about, like whole fruits and vegetables, plus lean protein and whole grain options. In fact, one of the things I love most about Green Chef is that they offer options that prioritize gut and brain health, with science-backed recipes that feature ingredients like fiber, antioxidants, and omega-3 fatty acids. During this time of lots of stress, it feels really grounding to know we're supporting ourselves nutritionally. I will take all the support I can get. And Green Chef doesn't just cover dinner recipes. I can add high quality breakfasts, lunches, and snacks to my weekly box from Green Market. Green Chef has a special offer for Tilt listeners. Go to greenchef.com slash tilt50 and use code tilt50 to get 50% off plus 20% off your next two months. That's 50% off plus 20% off your next two months when you use the code tilt50 at greenchef.com slash tilt50. Green Chef, the number one meal kit for eating well. Maybe I've watched too many seasons of The Amazing Race, but every time I have to go somewhere on the subway, I treat it like a competition. It's all about making the right gut decisions about which route will get me there the fastest. Sometimes those decisions get me where I'm going early, and other times my gambles don't really pay off. Probiotics can't help with most gut decisions, but if your gut needs a little support, Ritual has your back. Their Symbiotic Plus, a three-in-one supplement, has clinically studied prebiotics, probiotics, and a postbiotic to support a balanced gut microbiome. I've been using Symbiotic Plus for about six months now, and it's become a core part of my morning routine. I take the mini capsule every morning while making my way through my inbox, whether I'm at home or I'm on the road, because it doesn't need to be refrigerated. And the capsule itself is delayed released, which helps it survive the harsh conditions of the upper GI tract for delivery to the colon. And that's exactly where we want it to go. Ritual invested in a study modeling the human colon, which showed that Symbiotic Plus significantly increased microbial diversity and the growth of beneficial bacteria. There's no more shame in your gut game. Symbiotic Plus and Ritual are here to celebrate, not hide your insides. Get 25% off your first month for a limited time at ritual.com slash tilt. Start Ritual or add Symbiotic Plus to your subscription today. That's ritual.com slash tilt for 25% off. Called the Goal Planner Worksheet. You see this, Ash? Yeah, I do. And that's our upgraded version. When you're writing down the big goal, what is it that I kind of drill into your head about what a goal has to be or how to write that goal down? Well... Usually you say I should be very specific about my goal. I don't just say, like, run a 5K. I say run the color run, the one this year. Right. Or in the case of a school project, I'm thinking about your – you had a big World War One project last yeah, year. Yeah, that was fun. And that was, like, a three-month-long project, I think. And it was a huge project. Yeah, and I planned all the different stages. Right. So the big goal was – you were doing a museum exhibit about World War One, so the big goal was we to com- post that online. We should, so that people can read it. Yeah, maybe we will. Your big goal was to complete your World War One project by the end of school and to have a museum opening for it, right? Yeah. So it was super specific. It was concrete and it was measurable. And then the next line is a deadline because we're all about deadlines. But what do, have you learned about setting deadlines? Well, I've learned that if you feel like you're not going to be able to do it by your deadline, you should change your deadline right away. Oh, yeah. You shouldn't just say, ah, well, I'll, I'm, it, it'll be impossible to do it by this time, but I'll set this as my deadline anyways. You always want to try and keep your deadline. 
as a realistic estimate, and that means changing it whenever there's a setback or you. Yeah, you should update your deadline at all times to be an estimate of when you'll be finished. And you said the magic words there, realistic expectation. Yes. That's really important part of this, right, is setting a deadline that is actually doable. Because if you don't, you're just setting yourself up for failure, which isn't really helpful when you're trying to pursue goals, right? Yeah. The next line is, how will I know I've accomplished the goal? And that's just like an extra step. So in the case of your museum exhibit, how would you know you accomplished the goal? Well, when my museum is ready for people to see. Right. You would have held the opening. That would be yeah, the ultimate and sign. I did. And you did. And we ordered pizza and you had some friends come through. That was really nice. Yeah, it was great. So one of my favorite lines on the goal planning worksheet is the next one. It's how will I feel when I've reached my goal? And why do you think I ask you to write that out for every goal you're working on? Well, it makes the goal more tangible, right? In what way? You don't think, oh, well, I should do this by this. You should think, oh, it's going to be so great when I do this. Yeah, and one of the things, I think when we first did this, you were like, I don't know how I'm going to feel. And so I would ask you to close your eyes and imagine the goal being accomplished and really trying to tune in with that emotion. Like, how will it feel like crossing the finish line? Close your eyes and imagine that moment or How will it feel to be showing your friends around at your museum exhibit at the big opening and spend a few minutes kind of imagining that? Yeah, definitely. And so I think that you actually like that process now. Yeah, I do. Very nice. It's kind of tied in with our visualization, I think, too, which is part of what we do in our morning routine is visualize how we want things to go. Yeah. So... The last part of the goal planning worksheet is many steps to accomplish the goal. So can you walk listeners through what that is exactly? Yeah. We were super specific and we break down exactly what needs to happen in order to accomplish the goal. Right. So it would be like run 1K, run 2K, run 3K, run 4K, run 5K, run the color run. Yeah, that's pretty straightforward. Maybe how about for your museum exhibit? What were some of the many steps? Well, I needed to choose what I was going to do. I needed to plan everything. And then after I chose what I was going to do, I was like, okay, so what am I going to do my art on? And then I needed to get all the pictures for that. And then I needed to put them all together. And then I needed to make a brochure. And then we needed to invite everyone and get some pizza. Yeah, there were a lot of steps. And one of the things I encourage you to do and I encourage listeners to do is to break the steps down into the tiniest, 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 tiniest possible steps. It's like breathe. Well. (laughs) (laughs) Walk over the table. Breathe again. But one of the things that we know about you and that I know is the case for a lot of kids with executive functioning challenges is that It's called task initiation. Sometimes starting a task can be really hard, especially the bigger the task, the more overwhelming it can be. So one of the great parts about breaking it down is suddenly this overwhelming task that you don't know where to start. You have a starting point because if you have a small enough step, something you could do right now or today, then you're making progress and you're no longer looking at this big daunting project, you're looking at these little things and you can, you know, cross off a thing or two a day, right? Yeah. So this is the structure that we use all the time now for any goals. And again, we use it for personal goals and for school goals, school projects, right? We certainly do. So while we use the goal planning worksheet for big goals, we also then do a daily goal. We're really about goals here, I'm realizing. Yeah. but <laughs> goals. <laughs> we do a daily goal planner, which we've talked a little bit about on a previous podcast when we were talking about screen time planning. But right now we're using the productivity planner from Intelligent Change, and I'll include a link to that in the show notes. It's a great resource that I use They also created the five-minute journal, and they're really helpful for me in structuring my day, but as it turns out, they work well for you as well. Do you want to describe the productivity planner that you do in the morning? Yeah, it's great. 
how it works is I fill out my most important task to do first. I estimate how much time it will take. And then I fill out the, the second and third most important tasks, which I'll only do when I've finished the first one. Then I fill out any other tasks that I have to do. Right. And with estimations of how long they'll take. And then as I do the task, I fill it, I'm supposed to fill in the little bubbles and then see how much time it took, but I don't really. Mm-hmm. I do that part. But for you, what seems to work the best is just the fact that you are. Yeah, that I know what I'm going to do. Yeah, it's that daily check-in, the daily kind of looking at the day, what's going on, and what are my priorities today in order to stay on track with the big picture, right? Yeah. So I have a couple questions I wanted to ask you that might be helpful for listeners. I'm curious to know what derails you personally when you're working towards a goal? Like what are the things that typically get in your way? Usually when I get distracted with something else. Yeah. And we've talked That's about the biggest that. Thing. It is. It's still the biggest thing. What else? Sometimes you lose you lose momentum halfway through a project. Yeah, and I'm like and I'm like, I don't really want to do this project. Mm-hmm. Some of the time I actually don't want to do the project and I cancel it. But some of the time it's just, I just need a little break. Right. And that's something we've been working on a lot, actually. You're very, you have a lot of projects, personal projects that you're always wanting to work on during your free time. And you place a lot of pressure on yourself to achieve those goals. And so that is something we're also talking about is like giving yourself a break and being gentle with yourself And knowing that you can, you know, once you set a goal, you're also allowed to change the goal. You're allowed to realize halfway through, you know what, this is not what I really wanted to do. And I'm going to, I'm going to cancel this. That is not the end of the world to do either. The important part, if you do that, is to kind of consciously do it and reflect on why, what went wrong and, and what you'd like to learn from that situation, right? Definitely. I'm curious to know where your goals come from, because, again, you always seem to be working on a lot of things. Where do they, where do your your goals come from? I don't know. I think a lot of them come from just wanting something to do with my free time. It's kind of boring not having anything to work on. So you're just someone who, you're definitely your mother's son. (laughs) You need to be working on something at all times, yes. Were you initially resistant when I first start, when I kind of put slipped a copy of Doable in your room and said, hey, this is my book, you should read it. Or, you know, when I introduced yeah, a little bit. Yeah, to the idea of goal setting in general, why do you think you were resistant to getting more formal about it? I'm not sure because it seemed like a big bother to me. Like more work than it was worth? Yeah. It was like, I have to do all this stuff just so I can finish things. Right. So it needs to finish things. <laughs> I think you also thought it was adding more work. Yeah. To achieving the goal rather than getting rid of it. Do you still feel that way? No. So, it is more work, but it makes me achieve the goal faster. It would only be on a ridiculously easy goal where it would slow down. Got it. Like, for example, go for a run today. Right. It would be more work to do the productivity planner and then go for a run than just to go for a run. Exactly. Agreed. What do you like the most about our goal planning process? Or what parts of it do you think work the best for you? I don't know. I just feel... Hey there, it's Debbie. I love making this show and sharing conversations about how to support our awesome neurodivergent kids. I've seen how even one little insight from an interview can spark a big shift in daily life. But I know that raising complex kids can be messy and lonely. And just when we think we figured it out, something comes up that boots us right back to feeling overwhelmed and stuck. That's why I've poured everything into creating a way for parents like us navigating complex parenting journeys to join together and chart a path that feels positive, hopeful, and doable. It's the brand new Differently Wired Club experience. In the club, you'll get personal support from me and other seasoned parent coaches, six live calls every month where you can connect and get your personal questions answered, the opportunity to learn directly from authors and experts like I have on this show, 
monthly themes for getting specific and tactical, an exclusive private podcast feed, and the best, most generous community of parents. Seriously, these folks show up for themselves and each other, and that right there is really everything. Because it's a daily reminder that we're not alone. Our kids aren't broken, and we have totally got this. The recently rebooted Differently Wired Club is on a brand new platform with its very own iOS and Android app. It is such a great space. However you learn, whatever your style, no matter the ages, genders, and neurodivergent profile of your children, the Differently Wired Club can help you cultivate the positive shifts you're hoping for. Join us today by going to tiltparenting.com slash club. That's tiltparenting.com slash club. I hope to see you on the inside. Are you overwhelmed by the things that get in the way of you doing what you want to do? Are you looking for ways to simplify life to better align with your values? Do you want to create space in your schedule so you have room for more of the good stuff? Play, joy, relationships, gratitude, and more? If you answered yes to any of these questions, I invite you to check out Edit Your Life, a podcast to help you edit the unnecessary from your life so you have more room to enjoy the awesome. Through episodes with me, Christine Co, and a range of super smart, compassionate, and thoughtful guests, you'll come away with big picture insights and practical ways to declutter your home, schedule, and mental space without getting bogged down by perfection. I have always believed that small moments and actions matter tremendously. My goal is to help you find agency and space in your life through doable baby steps that will leave you feeling accomplished instead of overwhelmed. Check out Edit Your Life wherever you enjoy your podcasts. Feels like it makes it easier to accomplish things. Do you think breaking the big goal down helps a lot? Yeah. Why? I think it's just because it makes it feel more, it's no longer one big goal. It's a series of small goals Mm -hmm. that I can achieve easily. And that feels really satisfying to cross something off, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. I thought we could quickly share some of our tips for listeners as well. So one of the things that we do is every week we have our goals of the week on the wall So we go through our, not just school goals, but we also include your personal goals. So if you have something you're working on, you want to achieve that week, it goes on the wall. And then what do we do every morning in our morning meeting? We check in on our goals and we cross off anything we've done. Right. And we plan what we're going to do next. That's exactly right. So we're always checking in. So we're remembering it so it doesn't get lost. And then we can be intentional about what we're going to do that day towards it. We have another tip that has really worked out well. And that is with regards to when you're estimating how long something's going to take like a specific task. What's your secret for that, Asher? I always give myself at least twice as much time as I need. Well, I do that usually to accomplish my goal. That way I can, I just assume that all the setbacks combined will be twice as long as with no setbacks. Right, because that's a real challenge for you specifically. And I know it is for a lot of kids with learning and attention issues is this idea of figuring out how long tasks take and time management. So just think how long it would take if everything went perfectly and then double it. Yeah, that's a great rule of thumb. And then you can continue to gather information about like, oh, okay, so now I'm starting to learn how long things take, but it's much more satisfying to finish something ahead of time than to have something take away longer. And then you're not achieving your daily goals, right? Right. And then also, just to keep it real, this is not something that you fill out this worksheet and you're on your way and we have no problems. Like there is a lot of support that we have built into this in our in the way you and I work together, correct? Definitely. So like what kind of support, how, how do I support you in reaching your goals? Well, you check in and you see what I'm doing with Skype. It's like, how's your story going? And I'm like, oh, I wasn't working on the story. I'll get right back to work on that. Yeah, I do. It's kind of funny. Now in the afternoons, often I will go out to a cafe for a few hours so I can get some work and just have a change of scenery and get some focused work done on my projects. And you and I have been communicating via Skype. And it's really been actually great. I think we when we're both at home doing our own things, we're in other rooms and we're not necessarily yeah. talking. <laughs> but when we're both in different buildings doing our own things, then we chat all the time. But yeah, and that is something that I do is I will 
check in on you. But more specifically, I'm trying now to more, more than just me being like, hey, how's it going? Hey, how's it going? Are you working on this? Are you doing this? I'm trying to ask you, what do you need from me? Because that would be my goal is for you to be initiating the kind of support that you need. Yeah, exactly. I'm happy to help you reach your goals, but I don't want to be driving it, right? It has to come from you. Yeah. But at the same time, I can't just say, okay, you're on your own. So it's called scaffolding. Yeah. We're actually watching them take the scaffolding down in the building across the street, but it's like building in support layer by layer and then slowly get rid of it when you're done. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, my personal goal for you is eventually you're going to be able to approach, be able to approach any task, like any school project or any personal goal and say, I know what to do. I have to write it down. I have to set a deadline. I have to break it down and I need to find a way to be accountable to myself every day. Sounds great. Sounds like we should get out a worksheet for that. (laughs) We should get a goal planning worksheet for you to be independently doing goal planning worksheets. Yeah, exactly. Is there anything else that you want to add today? Any other tips or suggestions for other kids who are listening who may get overwhelmed by goals or not know how to approach them? Like any advice? Remember, your deadline, if your deadline is not fixed, if they're the only reason you want to do it by this time is just because is just because you think that's when you should be able to do it. If it's not concrete, like you have to do it now or in two and a half years when there's the next launch window to Mars. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. You have to finish your rover before there's a launch window or else your whole goal is ruined. But if you your goal is just do this, you can finish it whenever you want, but you think you should do it by this time, then you should always make sure your deadline is the most realistic estimate of how long it will take you. Right. Yeah, that is really important because it can be really disheartening to not reach your goals when you're trying to. Exactly. But also, I would just say consider a a learning process. We're big into self-knowledge here. So Every time you pursue a goal, you're gathering information about your own process and and about how you do things and how you can be successful. So even when you don't reach your goal exactly the way you wanted to, you can still learn about yourself and what you need to be more successful next time. Yeah. Well, Ash, I want to thank you for being on the show and sharing all of your insights about goal setting today. This was a very interesting conversation. You're welcome. You've been listening to the Tilt Parenting Podcast. For the show notes for this episode, including links to the resources Asher and I talked about, as well as our downloadable goal planning worksheet, visit tiltparenting.com slash session 39. If you like what you heard on today's episode and you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing to our podcast on iTunes or leaving a review. And lastly, if you're not already signed up for our newsletter, I'd love for you to join our Till Parenting online community. I send out short weekly updates with links to new content on the website, articles, and resources just for you. Thanks again for listening. For more information on Till Parenting, visit www.tillparenting.com. Hey, are you a parent of a teenager? Are you feeling overwhelmed about how to be what they need while also holding limits and boundaries that keep them safe? Are you tired of conversations that negate how messy this season of parenting is? Well, I've got you. My name is Casey O'Rourke. I am a positive discipline trainer, parent coach, and the host of the Joyful Courage podcast. Every week I come to you with an interview, digging into tough topics with experts I trust and solo shows that go deep into the personal growth and mindset needed to raise teens in a way that grows them into confident, capable young people. I am not afraid of getting real about the intersection of conscious parenting and the teen years, while also bringing in vulnerability, humor, and lightness. I'm walking the path with you and honored to serve. Listen to Joyful Courage on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you consume podcasts.